Freaks. This is Steve Does, episode number five. You know, Tuesday is Steve Says, which means Thursday is Steve Does. Tuesday, we talk about how to think about it, the mindset you need when you're doing it. And Thursday, we talk about what you actually need to be doing in the trenches when it comes to health, fitness, nutrition, training, all that good stuff. It's really based off, usually off of your questions, what are you struggling with this week in this live broadcast, health, fitness, training, nutrition, peak, freak, style. What are you struggling with in your weight loss, in fitness, in training, in health and nutrition? I'm going to pull you up right here. If you have any questions, you can ask them right here. I have a lot of your questions already that we're going to be addressing. And then if you have any additional questions, they can be answered live right here in the broadcast. This is episode number five. So you know where Steve, what Steve does really is about is you know we do things freaking differently at peak. We train differently, we eat different, we act freaking different because we are fucking different. We are peak freaks and that's just where we do it. We're talking about how to le learning our unique training systems, how to prepare for the invasion. We're talking about our unique weight loss strategies, our nutritional discipline and educational eating. And that's what it's all about. That's how we run our systems Questions you can ask in here. I can see them as they're coming in. They can be answered here live during the broadcast. In addition to the other questions you guys have already emailed in, sent in, posted on Facebook, send them in, or you can text them to 845-893-6529. And we are going to continue to get rolling. Go right into the first few questions. Basically, what, what one of the first questions I got today or for today's broadcast for episode number five was, what kind of stuff can I put into my protein shake? My protein shakes are nasty. What can I add into my protein shakes to help me out? I'm looking to lose weight. I have about 45 pounds to lose at least. And first off, this person hasn't been, so there's always the usual questions at, that, that I would ask you is, how much weight do you want to lose in the next six weeks? How much weight, what is your ultimate dream body goal weight? And when was the last time you were at your ultimate dream body goal weight. Important questions. And then why do you want to get that at that dream goal weight? And I know we're talking about protein shake, but that shit is important to understand what you should put in your protein shake. I know it sounds whacked and fucked up, but that's just the way it works. Peak freak style. We need to know that stuff to really let you know what you can put in your protein shake or probably what you cannot put in your protein shake. So the usual answers are, well, I'll, then I'll go on and ask you, so what do you put in your protein shake? If you guys, if you can put in the comments, tell me what you put in your protein shake and let me know. What kind of stuff do you add to your protein shake? And the typical answer, as you already know, is probably bananas, strawberries, peanut butter, low-fat milk or fat-free milk, right? That's the usual stuff that goes into protein shakes in general. So your protein powder, when you get one of those canisters or whatever, whatever you get, those protein powders... That stuff is meant to be had by itself. It's meant to be served alone. You go wander to GNC and, and, that, and wherever the crap place you go to get your, your powders, and that stew's just trying to get rid of the shit that's on their shelves that they can't sell. He's telling you how this is the most awesome shit in the world, and it might be some decent stuff, but you really don't even know, because who knows what, what, what shit they're trying to sell you. But you get what, what you think is low calorie, you know, it's something for weight loss or meal replacement, or a protein shake, or you don't even know the difference between a meal replacement and a protein shake. There is a difference between the two, and but you, you get something because it's low calorie, it's low carb, it's low sugar, it's low fat, the perfect blend for losing weight, right? So what do you do? Iced coffee. Nick adds in iced coffee. Yes, get your protein and get your freaking blood flowing at the same time. Go for it. So... Those protein powders are meant to be had 100% by themselves, at most with milk and not fat-free milk or low-fat milk. Only thing would be would be unsweetened almond milk or the cashew milk or whatever, 25, 30 calorie milk at most. If you need a little bit of milk, really every freaking protein powder is meant to be by itself. So you get that low-fat, that low-calorie, cal low-carb, low-sugar thing, and you go add these things like fruits. And the, the ones we mentioned. So I'm going to give you some numbers real quick. A banana, a medium-sized banana, 105 calories, 27 grams of carbs, 14 grams of freaking sugar. One medium-sized banana. 
Blueberries, one cup, 85 calories, 21 grams of carbs, 15 grams of sugar. You get the point here. An apple, a medium-sized apple, like however the fuck that big that is. 95 calories, 25 carbs, 19 sugar. And it goes on and on. You, you, get, you get what I'm saying about the fruits and the numbers in fruits. So your protein powder, which is meant to be by itself, has maybe 110 to 130 calories, right? It is meant to be alone. It's, it is, it's high protein. It's low carb. It's low sugar. It's low fat. It is meant for weight loss, and it is meant to be by itself. Then you go flavor it with this stuff, like... And we need to get some nuts. We'll get to that another time. We're talking about right fruits right now. You add it with these fruits and nuts and peanut butter, and you end up flavoring it with two to two to three to even sometimes the things I've broken down for people four times the amount of calories, and it's loaded in carbs, loaded in sugar, loaded in fat. Think about it. The protein powder by itself is 120 calories. You're adding a medium-sized banana and and a, and a cup of blueberries or a half a cup of blueberries. That's like 200 calories. Of just flavoring. Then you forget it. You added a scoop of natural, you know, but it's natural peanut butter, right? And the healthy fat. We know how that goes. You want to be a healthy fat person or a healthy skinny person. You choose. So you end up flavoring it with 300 calories when your shake is only 120 calories to start with. That shit ain't gonna help. That shit ain't gonna help you lose weight. Uh, and on the Peak Freak Educational Eating Program, we try for zero fruits, zero nuts, and zero many other things. We're gonna get to some more of them in a little bit, or at least very little moderation. It really depends on how accelerated you want your weight loss results to be. If you want rapid weight loss results, you're going to go to, to freaking cold turkey right off the bat. You don't, you, don't need to, you don't need to think fruits are not healthy, but they're just not conducive to weight loss. Sure, they're healthy. Sure, there's plenty of benefits in the fruits, but the benefits are not the calories, the sugar, and the carbs. That's going to slow down your weight loss progress and results. It also doesn't mean you can't have them forever. It just means probably no for now. Probably not, not a good idea if you're looking to lose weight you know, to, to have them right now. So, now if you're used to stuffing your face with even worse shit than fruits, like freaking fast food and burgers and bread and fucking pizza and cake and all that nasty shit like that, then sure, switching to fruits would be a huge improvement if, if you're basing it off of that. But on our Peak Freak Monitored Program, our Educational Eating Program, we go for cold turkey, we cut it out completely, and normally we went to talk about this a couple weeks ago on, on Steve Does, I think episode three or two, one of them, where if you were on your own and weren't part of our program, then we would, period, you would go through periodization where you would slowly implement new different things into your nutrition and, and not all at once. But when you're with us and you're on a daily basis, you're in the gym with us four, five, six days a week, then we can monitor you. We could be there right with you in the freaking trenches. You're on our private, in our private VIP mastermind group, and we are coaching you and guiding you to literally 24 hours a day accountability is such a different story. So on our program, we go to zero. We go to zero right off the bat because we know that with the proper coaching and leadership and mentoring and help and assistance and accountability and support and family and fucking team like we do with the Peak Freaks, that you can handle the zero. But on your own, probably a different story, but that's a whole other whole other episode that we're talking about. But look at it this way. If you were eating all that shit, even if you weren't eating all that shit, if a banana is the worst thing you ate all week, no matter what, no matter what your goals are, that's a pretty good fucking week, right? So even as bad as bananas are, don't think we're not saying it's all evil and this and that. We do try to go zero on that stuff. When someone's talking about they haven't been to their ultra dream body goal weight of losing 45, 50 pounds in 9, 10, 12, 20 years, it's worth to go zero for a little while. Don't you think that's an even trade up to get there in less than a year, which is what we can guarantee at peak, is get to ultra dream body goal in that amount of time. Reverse freaking time. Make you young again. That's what it's all about, changing your freaking life, changing your mind, changing your body, changing your lifestyle. But you might be asking, what won't, won't I be missing out? Because there's always those people that have an answer for everything. They always have a reason why they need to do it. It's the healthy fat. I, I couldn't disrespect my, my freaking aunt who made the cheesecake or others, all this other bullshit or why they need to eat this stuff. So you might be asking yourself, won't I be missing out on all the healthy benefits of eating fruits? I know they're so they're healthy for you and they have all these other things. You don't, even know the, you don't even know what they have. You just say that healthy benefits. What do the fruits even have? What do fruits even have? Do you even freaking know what the fruits have? So you ask yourself, you're going to miss out on the benefits, right? Fruits do, they contain antioxidants and phytonutrients. Antioxidants, you know, is going to help boost your immune system, help you recover, help, help you just stay overall healthy. Same as phytonutrients. They're, those are plant, most plant foods contain thousands of natural chemicals, and uh, which are phytonutrients. But there's like a, you know, a main like 7 to 10 to 12 of them that we're talking about. We're not going to get deep into that because we could be here all day talking about that. There's literally thousands, thousands of them, like 25,000 of them, some shit like that. 
There are natural chemicals that are in the plant-based foods. And phytonutrients are not essential for keeping you alive. So make sure you, first of all, you know that. Phytonutrients are not essential for keeping you alive. So if you, you can survive even without them. Can you be optimal? Maybe, maybe not. But we want to cover all our bases and make sure and keep ourselves strong. We're training hard. So we want every bit of nutrition in advance we can, right? So when we cut those fruits out to zero, we don't want to lose out on those antioxidants and phytonutrients, right? Like, there are vitamins and minerals that plant foods contain and other, other foods contain. Those are vital to your, your survival. You literally need them to keep you alive or you will freaking die if you're deficient in them. But these phytonutrients we're talking about, these stuff that's, you know, things that are in these plant-based foods, you do not need them to survive. But when you eat or drink them, they can help prevent diseases and help, help keep your body working properly, help you recover, help you with just a general overall energized state and alert and tons of benefits of it. So we're, they're not for survival, but to me, really, technically they are, if you think about it. Because to me, we don't want to fucking survive. We are peak freaks. We want to thrive. We want to thrive. We want to excel. We want to be the fucking best that we could possibly be and get better every freaking day. So... In a way, phytonutrients are essential for your survival. So we make up for that by eating pretty much as much vegetables as we want. And when we're talking about vegetables, we're talking about greens. Don't fucking just eat a bunch of corn on the cob that's soaked in a bunch of fat-ass, lard-ass butter and say, oh, you said I can have this. Steve said that Steve does have corn. Steve doesn't have no fucking corn, okay? So you will get your antioxidants, your phytonutrients, and your fiber, a shitload of all three of those, from your vegetables, eat just, even just your greens, and you can mix in some of the colored shit like the carrots and the, and the tomatoes, but that's when your carbs start getting there a little bit. But when you talk about greens, right? Let's look at some greens. Have you, have, first of all, have you ever heard of someone get, getting fat off of too much broccoli? You can eat as much of the greens as you want. That is the best thing about our educational eating program that we have. You can eat as much as you want of everything we tell you you can eat. As much as you want. You don't have to measure your food. You don't have to count your fucking calories unless you get to a, like, a fine point where you need to like narrow it down. You're looking for that chiseled six pack because you're already lean and, 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 and flat stomach and all that. Then it was still a story. We start really fine pointing things, fine tuning things. But let's look at broccoli. One cup of broccoli has 31 calories, six grams of carbs, only one and a half grams of sugar, and about the same amount of protein. So even sometimes, more, some more protein, even two and up to two and a half grams of protein. So two and a half grams of protein and six grams of carbs, which only one and a half grams of sugar. So more protein than sugar and almost half as much protein as carbs. So as much as that broccoli is going to be a carb source and we do need some carb, we need fiber. You need some carbs in your nutrition. Don't mis forget that. We're not on some zero carb shit because we're talking about educational eating that you can last forever. I've eaten like this for over 20 something years. Look at me. I'm totally fucking normal, right? Wouldn't you want to be just like me? Spinach, one cup. One cup of spinach, you know how many calories in fucking one cup of spinach? It's crazy. It's like under, it's single digits. It's like seven to nine calories. One, one gram of carbs. 1.1 gram of carbs and like 0.9 grams of protein. It's pretty much a gram of carbs and a gram of protein. They just want to be, it's just a fraction, like a fucking millifraction more carbs and protein in spinach. So you get the idea on the greens. That's why you can have as much greens as you want. You should eliminate the fruits as much or completely as possible. And... Then, but to cover all your bases, what is this Steve does, so what do I do? I load up on my veggies, I cut my fruits, except once in a while when I, I know what I'm doing, I know how much I'm having, I can earn it, and I deserved it, and that's almost like a treat. You know, it's a pretty sad fucking world when a, when a, when a cup of grapes is your fucking cheat meal. But you have goals, you want a certain way you want to look, a certain way you want to feel, you want to fucking live a long time, sometimes that's the shit you got to do. So you decide, you decide what's more important to you. So, I'll have fruits here and there, but really not too much. But I know I'm cutting, I'm not having fruits too often, and definitely not every day. And sometimes I'll go months without fruits. And you probably should, especially if that, when you're talking about weight loss. But you need to cover your bases with some kind of greens and, or fruit supplement blend or powder or different pills that they have. I use the Herbalife Garden 7, which is a phytonutrient blend that has like the top phytonutrients that you're missing out of the, of the fruits and, and vegetables to make sure I'm getting enough in the amount I need to support my training because we're training like freaks so you need to have above and beyond so not just some multivitamin that has like a trace of all this shit even on your regular vitamins, vitamin C and all this other stuff but multivitamin is not going to cut it so then when it comes to carbs carbs for weight loss and performance are totally different if you're talking about carbs for performance you need your carbs to be like 50 to 60 percent of your calories we're talking about performance athletes 
freaking marathon runners. And just because you did a Spartan race doesn't mean you you need a carb load from one day of doing this stuff. You didn't do it's, it's you're not a competitive athlete doing this on a regular basis. So I've seen too much bullshit after some Spartan races recently of people doing all these feasts because of one one race that they did. That's that's not the way it goes. That's not the way it goes. If you were if you were a competitive Spart freaking running racer or whatever that whatever it is. And that's all you're doing, and you don't care about how you look, you're worried about strictly performance, then you start doing the carb loading and the carb this and the carb that and shit loads of carbs for fuel and for performance. For performance performance based, but not for the look base. You're not necessarily gonna look the best to perform the best. Those two do not always go hand in hand. Trust me, they do not go hand in hand. I will probably perform much better and be stronger. Not too much, because I've kind of balanced out a little bit when there's a little extra, not looking the same as when you're beach ready, if you want to call it, whatever the fuck you want to call it. So in general, weight loss, your carbs need to be 25% of your total calories as long as your protein is a minimum of 50%. So 25% of your total calories. And remember, I'm talking about calories, not grams here. There is a huge freaking difference. Who knows the difference between calorie and gram? Who knows how to convert calorie or grams into calories? Because I said you need 25% needs to be from carbs and 25% of your total calories for the day not your grand. You need to convert that shit. Let's see. What do we have here? Rachel Miller says, yes, but research shows it's best to get your nutrients from real whole foods rather than pills and powders, right? Of course you want to get most of your stuff, but that's what we're talking about. You should be loading up on vegetables, as much vegetables as you want, but to cover the bases, I will also, even though I'm loading up on vegetables, I will still take my greens blend, and a lot of them are very natural and whatever, and you decide on that stuff if it's if it's natural or organic or whatever, and no and no preservatives or whatever artificial shit in there. Of course, natural actual whole foods are always going to be better, but that's impossible, especially when you're eating healthy and you're eating, you know, you're not eating all those fruits because you're going to be loaded in sugar. So you need to kind of supplement it with something sometimes just to cover your bases. You're not going to get enough of something sometimes, like vitamin D also, when you're talking about vitamins. But right now, specifically, we're talking about the fruits and what you're losing from them. Load up on your vegetables, which is probably going to make up for it, but just in case, I supplement with greens because I'm busting my ass, I'm training hard, I'm active, I'm on the move, I'm on the run, every day, all day, making shit happen. So you need to make sure you're covering your bases and not becoming deficient in something. Like vitamin C, there's no way I would feel like and the way that I, my body would break down, that I would be sick all the time, so I supplement with vitamin C. The amount of vitamin C I get per day is like 2,000 times, 2,000% with the daily recommended allowance. The daily recommended allowances are, is if you sat still on a couch, the amount you would need to not fucking die sitting still at rest for your body weight or whatever. So I need to go a little above that because I'm not sitting on the motherfucking couch. Vanessa... Williams. What are, you, what are you laughing at, Vanessa? What are you laughing at? What's so funny? Share it. So back, who knows how to convert grams into calories? Let's get to it. Every gram is not created equal. One gram of carbs equals four grams of protein. <laughs> four grams of protein. One gram of carb equals four calories, not protein. One gram of protein equals four calories. But one gram of fat, and that's why they call it freaking fat, because it is fat, equals nine calories. Huge difference. So one gram of fat is more than double the amount of calories as one gram of protein or carbs. So for carbs and weight loss, depending on how much weight you have to lose or how much muscle you have or how active you are, obviously these are always factors in how much carbs you need a day, right? So I'm going to need a lot more carbs a day than someone who is just started training and has 50 or 60 pounds to lose. They're going to need a lot less carbs. But a general starting point for weight loss, not performance, not a, an active athlete, not someone who randomly does a Spartan race twice a year. You're doing, you have a hobby that you're doing once in a while. You're not going to carve up when you go to play fucking chess, so don't do that shit after your little races. But aside the point, this ain't about that. Yeah, of course, vitamin C, there's tons of vitamins in all those things, but I'm going to cover my bases. It's a backup plan. I'll take the vitamins, because Rachel is saying there's vitamin C and broccoli and spinach. There is. There's, there's shit loads of vitamins, of course, in all those vegetables. But I'm just covering my bases. I know I, no matter what I ate, I'm going to cover my bases for all the different vitamins and phytonutrients and antioxidants I need every day in addition to what I got. And if you say, oh, you're just going to piss that out. Whatever. 
proven. So, a starting point for carbs for weight loss would be, and this is like a baseline, 0.5 grams of carbs per pound of body weight. So, I weigh 180 pounds, 185, probably 185 right now. So, that means I would need half of that in carbs to start leaning out. And that's just to start leaning out, and that's about where I would be. Maybe I would even go a little higher than that because I know my carb needs, but if you like, I was mentioning earlier, if you have 50, 60 pounds to lose, or even 20 pounds, 30 pounds, just have a good amount of weight to lose, you're probably going to drop even lower than the half a gram of carbs per pound of body weight. And then you'll be period, go through periods of that where you're going even lower, and even sometimes as low as a quarter gram per pound of body weight, but that is not sustainable for a long amount of time. We're talking about for like a few days or maybe a week. If you stay too low for too long, you will not be able to perform, you'll end up losing muscle, eating muscle, having no energy, and actually getting higher fat percentage. You can lose weight and increase your fat percentage if you're not doing shit the right way, if that makes sense. So, you know, first of all, you look like this and weigh 140, you look like this and weigh 150. But you can also lose weight, you can lose 10 pounds, your fat percentage can increase by 5 or 6% if you're just eating away at muscle and your body's storing on fat because you're low, too low carb and you train too hard for too long. That shit ain't gonna work. So, we're talking, and, and, and these carbs you're going to get, we're talking about getting your carbs from your greens, like, like we're just talking about. There's carbs in there that if you have as much you want, it's going to build up. You're going to get the amount of carbs you need. We're talking about Greek yogurt, pro, your protein shakes, oil meal replacements, and yes, there is a difference. We'll get to that another time. This isn't really what it's too much about. But when it comes down to it, this is, I'm going to say something so deep right now, so freaking deep that I've never said before or mentioned before, and I'll probably never repeat it. For the most part, except for the additional needs they need, like for growing, like that they can't have fruits and milk, but in general, the things that they avoid, the things that you shouldn't eat, is I eat like a pregnant woman. Yes, I eat like a pregnant woman. Doesn't mean I have a cravings for fucking dipping pickles inside of rice pudding or some nasty shit like that. I'm talking about, all right, so women get pregnant. The first thing they do when they get pregnant, this is like blows my fucking mind, but I learned so much about this, about nutrition from studying pregnant women when I was I'm training. I've had at least 50, 60 kids. Not mine. I mean, I've trained people, women through 50, 60 pregnancies, at least. So, no, I don't have 50, 60 kids, motherfuckers. I know this is what you're about to say. So, I, I eat like a pregnant woman. Pregnant women get pregnant. The first thing they do over everything else, they go to Google, what can I not eat now that I'm pregnant, right? So what do they come up with? They see raw meat or raw fish, uncooked seafood, or like rare and undercooked like beef and poultry stuff like that. It should be avoided because there's risk of contamination and different bacterias and all kinds of salmonella and all this other stuff, right? So they avoid it because of all that stuff. Because they're pregnant, they avoid that stuff. Or they avoid diet soda because that's the chemicals and the aspartame and all these nasty chemicals they can't even pronounce and no one even knows what they do. And the artificial food coloring, they avoid that because the lab rats that have the artificial food coloring grow like a, a third fucking eye or some shit. So they avoid that stuff because they're pregnant. They avoid excessive caffeine. They avoid alcohol. They avoid the soft, soft cheeses because they could have like growth and bacteria inside there the way that those nasty like chunks of cheese are. They, and also unwashed vegetables. You, if you're pregnant, you shouldn't have unwashed vegetables. So to me, this is so fucking stupid. Look at the, what I just listed off for you, right? So if you're pregnant, you shouldn't have this stuff. All this nasty fucking shit I just mentioned. Unwashed vegetables? Food that might have bacteria or salmonella? So you're willing to risk it on yourself and just kill yourself. But when you're pregnant, oh, I don't want to hurt the poor you know, the poor baby, so let me be healthy just while I'm pregnant. And now that I'm not pregnant anymore, oh, I can go eating all this fucking poison again because now I'm not pregnant. So now I'll fucking die from all this poison and I'll have this nice healthy baby because I didn't do it when I was pregnant. Like, how stupid is that? If there's something, for the most part, that you should not eat when you're fucking pregnant, you probably should never fucking eat it. Unwashed vegetables? That's like on an official list of what not to eat when you're pregnant, unwashed fucking fruits and vegetables. Like, then why should you eat it at all? Why is it, it should be a list of what not to eat fucking ever. Not just because you're not pregnant. That's just so stupid. Excessive caffeine or excessive alcohol or any alcohol. If it's that bad for you, don't fucking do it. Why would you do it? Why would you do it ever? 
Like, that's just so stupid. It, it, it's just stress to avoid these things while pregnant. When, what about when you're not pregnant? Or, when, you know, what, are these things then all of a sudden safe and healthy when you're not pregnant? Salmonella is all of a sudden fine because you're not pregnant. No, dumbass. You're going to be get sick from it just the same. Like, it's just not healthy at all. Don't fucking eat it. Then I hear, this is even better. This is even better. So now you, you eliminate all the unhealthy stuff when you're pregnant. The kid's born. You go back to eating your unhealthy, uncooked fucking meat and fish that has all kinds of nasty shit to possibly have in it. People get sick, like I swear. Everyone I know that eats like sushi and all that stuff gets sick like 50% of the time they eat it. Because this shit is impossible to stay fresh. It's just fucking nasty. Anyway. Then the kid's born, right? Now, now it's, a, it's a, a two years old, five years old, whatever age the kids are. And I hear all the time that, you know, their kids have all these snacks, these nasty Doritos and cookies and all this other bullshit, right? Hot dogs. And, but the parent says, no, I'm, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to be healthy. So I don't eat any of that. Just my kids do. Like, like, holy shit. Holy shit. Unless you're talking about the fruits and the milk and the whole wheat bread that you're eliminating from your diet that your kids should be having because they're in a growth phase, but you shouldn't because you're dieting. Unless that's what you're talking about, then you're fucking whacking the head. Just as whacking the head while you eliminated salmonella only while you were pregnant and just in, encouraged it when you weren't. So fruits, milk, some bread, those are great healthy foods if you're trying to grow and get bigger, right? So like if a kid who's trying to grow, a pregnant woman who has a baby needs to grow inside of her, then you, need, you can eat those things and you should have those things because you're not looking for weight loss like we're, we're talking about by eliminating these fruits and these other things. So if you're pregnant and looking to... You know, if you're, if you're not pregnant and looking to lose weight and stay healthy, you need to avoid those things. It's freaking simple. So then the, the women, women and men, right, will say, oh, I don't eat, that's not mine, I don't eat it, that's just my kids. So, okay, dumbass, so it's unhealthy for you because you want to stay healthy, but you'll get the fucking ding-dongs and, and Twinkies for your kids, the fucking poison. So you'll poison your kids, but oh, it's not for me because I want to be healthy. But don't your kids be fucking healthy too? Stop feeding them that shit. And they'll say, oh, it's just in the house, so they ate it. And their kid's fucking six years old. So I'm like, wow, you let your kid go to the store? And, and, and you give your kid money to go to the grocery store by himself? He's only six years old? To go buy the fucking Twinkies? And all this other nasty shit? And these fucking hot dogs and whatever other freaking greasy ass shit that you get? Oh, no, I get it. I just don't have it eat it myself. So you buy the poison. You fucking give it to your kids. You encourage them. But then don't eat it yourself. Just look how fucking stupid. This shit just don't, it doesn't make sense to me. If I'm wrong, then, I don't know, I'm not wrong because it just doesn't make sense to me. So then you're right, whatever makes sense to you is the truth. But it is the truth. People will, people will be trying to lose weight and stay healthy, but all these freaking nasty fucking snacks and cakes and shit, with, they'll give it to their kids. Like, how stupid is that? It's not, if it's not good enough for you, then and you'll serve it to your kids. If it's not good enough for you, it shouldn't be good enough for your kids. If it's not good enough because you're pregnant, it shouldn't be good enough when you're not pregnant. It's just, there's no gray line on whether salmonella or unwashed fruits and fucking vegetables are good for you. Like, holy shit. Alright, you get the point on that. So, the next question. that just Right before we came on here, I just saw this question. Didn't even finish reading it. Put it in here where it's going to go for it. She said the scale... And the body is totally off the top of what we're saying. We're done with those are our main topics. The fruit, the carbs, that whole pregnancy thing, and the kids, and what, what you should eat and shouldn't eat, and how to avoid the stuff, and carbs, and all that other stuff, right? So, scale. Someone, someone today just posted, minutes before I came on here, it was Vanessa. I think she was watching earlier. I don't know if she's still here. Vanessa said, the scale and body fat have not moved in three weeks. Three weeks. I'm trained five times a week. My nutrition is on point. I do appear thinner, and my clothes are getting big. But why isn't, isn't the scale cooperating? Do I need to change something up? Water intake could definitely be increased, but could that really be the issue? Only two months into this program, did I hit a plateau already? I've lost 11 pounds and 6% of body fat so far, trying to lose another 20. All right, I'm going to, in a good way, I'm going to pick this apart, all right? First of all, plateau. We know there's no such thing as a plateau. Second thing here is, the scale hasn't moved in three weeks. If there was such thing as a plateau, we're talking about like three months minimum of like, I'm just stuck. I am killing it. I am nailing it. I am doing everything perfect. I swear. Here's my three months food log. Here's my three months training log. Here's my sleep log. I have everything nailed down and in three months. I still have 20 pounds to lose and I haven't budged a pound. That's when I might even consider the freaking P word of plateau. Maybe even consider, but probably not. I guarantee you can always find the reason. 
But three weeks, impossible. You cannot, there's no plateau in three weeks, especially when it, it's three weeks of without losing anything and you're only two months into it. That, that, that three weeks, that's almost 50% of the two months. So you're saying you hit a plateau after five, or what is it? You said two months, right? So two months, eight weeks. So after five weeks, you hit a plateau. That's impossible. All right, so also breaking down this, this is some peak freak math shit. If you haven't lost weight in three weeks, that means in the five weeks, you hit a plateau, right? And you lost 11 pounds. So in those first five weeks, you lost 11 pounds. Your goal for long-term sustained weight, if, even if you have 100 pounds to lose, is to lose one pound a week. And I know Vanessa didn't have 100 pounds to lose. She's only lost 11, only wants to lose another 20. Then she only had 30 pounds to lose. So that's not that huge amount, right? So she lost 11 pounds in five weeks. That's over two pounds a week for five straight weeks. That's double what the baseline is, even if she had more than 30 pounds total to lose, right? So she's way ahead of the game to start. So when you're going to go so rapid, so fast, there comes a time your body needs to catch up. There's so much shit going on. Your body's going to have to catch up. Now, did you gain any weight in those times? No. So that's a victory right there. You didn't gain any weight after being so far and rapid and accelerated ahead of the game, ahead of the pace in five freaking weeks. So now let's look at even the full eight weeks. Eight weeks, you still lost 11 pounds. That's still three pounds above what your baseline is of a pound a week, right? So you're still three pounds. So technically, you have another three weeks to play with to still be on par to lose one pound a week. This math math makes sense in my head. I hope you're following me. It makes freaking sense to me. So technically, by the 11th week, if you still didn't lose another pound, you still have lost 11 pounds in 11 weeks, if you know what I mean. It doesn't matter how fast you do it, because you can lose four pounds one week, one pound... The second week, no pounds. The third week, and another four pounds there. You still lost nine pounds, or whatever that math was, over those four weeks. So that's two and a half, two, two pounds, whatever, two and a quarter pounds a week. You know what I mean? You got to look at the big picture, do the numbers, break it down pounds per week, not just how much you lost. But you also said your clothes are you're feeling better. I know you're feeling better, and your clothes are fitting better. I'm sure you have more energy. Your body fat percentage is down six percent. You're down eleven pounds. You're killing it. You have, exact, you have exactly this much to worry about. Fucking zero to worry about about what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Stay focused. Make sure you're not slipping up. Make sure you're posting your meals on our private page. Stay active in the group. Stay focused. I guarantee you're going to be just fine. Besides, you are going to start getting into a slightly muscle building phase. We're not going to use that as, as too much of an excuse because muscle does not grow so fast. But your metabolism is going to start speeding up. So you'll go through a fat loss phase, build a little muscle, boost your metabolism. Fat loss phase because now you're using that new muscle to, to boost your metabolism and start burning that extra bit of fat that you have to do. You don't have a ton of fat to lose. If I'm not mistaken, you just put Vanessa just put some, if she's still watching, she put some pictures the other day, like half naked pictures. So she, you're doing just fine. I'll tell you that. You're all good. You have nothing to worry about. There's no such thing as a plateau, especially after three weeks, especially two months in. After only five weeks, it's impossible to have a plateau. That was all the question. Yes, Vanessa is here still watching. You're the ones that posted the pictures a couple days, Vanessa? Was that you? I think it was. You're good. You're all set. Keep doing what you're doing. You're fucking killing it. You're looking fucking awesome. You are fucking awesome. And those are the questions you have for this week. If you have any more questions, comments, yes, no patience. After five weeks, you hit a plateau. That's the kind of shit that gets me fucking fired up when someone says that. But look at your results. Fucking awesome. And you just want more and more and more. So we like it. Never settle. Never settle. Yes, it was you with those, those half-naked pictures in your thong or whatever. All right, so if you have any more questions, comments, put them in the comments. I will personally answer every single one of them, every question you put in there, or you can email, text, other questions you have for the pre next week's coming up, and I will talk to you soon. No excuses.